Hey there, this is the second video about my ST. In the previous video, what we did was we looked at it. I gave you a bit of background history on it being my ST and everything. It's quite personal to me. And I showed you all the insides and what the upgrades were. I've got a TOS upgrade in it and a RAM upgrade. And in this video, what we'll do is we'll look at the power supply. It's kind of old, it's a bit crusty. Some of the caps on it look a little bit suspicious. Um, I'm not sure if it's giving out the right voltages. So we need to just check that this works properly. This is quite important because anything else I want to do with my Atari, if it isn't working, like if the power supply doesn't give out a decent stable five volts, I can't do anything else with it. It might start crashing and acting weird. So let's get on with looking at this thing. Okay then, so this is the setup that we're going to use. Got my multimeter, got the power supply, I've got a load resistor that's currently hooked up to the five volt connection, which is this red one. Um, it's switched off at the moment at the wall, but switched on here. I'm going to touch this bit as little as possible because I have no idea which parts are live. I'm fairly sure all of this bit is. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so we have five volts, that seems to be working. That resistor isn't really very warm, which is nice. Right, let's try the 12 volt one. Okay, so I've set it up to do the 12 volt. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, we have 10 volts. That doesn't sound happy. Now I've got another resistor here. This one is 2.2 ohm. This one, try not to short anything out with it. I think it's a 10, yeah. This one's a 10 ohm resistor, it's a 2.2. Let's load it down more, see what it does. Right then, so we've got the other resistor in. Let's see what happens. Six. Okay, yeah, this is not happy. Power supply, is it then? If it can't do that, that's not good. I mean, that's not even warm. So let's see what happens to the five volt whilst we've loaded that down. Can I clip onto it without shorting anything out? Right, so I've clipped directly onto the power supply. Let's see what the five volt is doing. Three volts. Yeah, this power supply is knackered. Okay. Let's see if we can improve this then. Well, I guess that answers my initial question of, does this even need recapping? I'm quite surprised it even worked, really. Right, so this is why you need to load your power supply down for testing. If you look, it says 5.1 volts on the 5 volt rail, so you'd think that was fine. And if we just test the 12 volt again. Okay, so actually, this shows you that something dodgy is going on. This is supposed to be 12 volts. It's not even loaded with anything, and it says 10.9. So yeah, this power supply is a bit dead. I mean, there's nothing in the ST that uses 12 volts, really. I've not got a floppy drive in it anymore, so it's probably good enough. But yeah, having decided that the power supply is probably in need of some care and attention, I've got all the various capacitors. I've also got a new rectifier and one of these. I think that goes there. I'm not quite sure why I've got two resistors. So first step is to take this to bits, take all these off. Um, take off the connectors so that I can get the board out and then start desoldering things.
Now we come to a bit of an interesting part. Here's the bridge rectifier, which is quite a low powered one. And according to what I've been reading on the kit I've bought, um, I need to replace it with this, which is a 10 amp bridge rectifier. It's just, it's different shape. See that's like spread into four. This is in a row and also the holes are bigger. So let's get this off and then work out how to make this fit in there as non-destructively as possible. Okay, so that's where it needs to go. There's positive, there's negative, those two opposites are EC. Kind of matches this. I've got a positive and a negative. They generally line up, and then the AC ones need bending to fit across. However, also, the holes are not big enough. So according to the instructions, I need to get a one millimeter drill bit and make them slightly wider. Right, here we go. Whoops. There. One mil drill bits. Get one of these. I should be able to do this with my fingers. I'm only going through existing holes, trying to widen them slightly. Well, that's already the same width. Let's just see if I can get any through in any way at all. Yeah, maybe it'll fit. Right, so, how's this going to work? I need to bend the middle pins. And then it needs to go down. Try not to bend them too much. I only withstand so much of this abuse. And then the two side ones. One of them needs to come in. So like that. Like that. There. That kind of mutilation might make it fit. Right, so they need to come across. How's the other one go? The holes are not quite wide enough. Need a bigger drill bit. Right, let's try some one and a half mil. This might be just big enough. Don't know if you can hear it, but my soldering iron's making some very interesting tapping noises. Here, have a listen. That's my 20 quid soldering iron. Uh, I wonder if it's on its way out. I'd like to know what the tapping noise is. There we go, one little makeshift drill bit. Oh yeah, that works better. It looks a bit brutal, however, there is still plenty of metal left on these pads. And it's not damaged them, it's just made the holes wider. So let's see if we can get this back in. Get it in the right way around. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to rely on its weight and size to hold it in whilst I get one leg tacked down. Let's go for this leg. Oh, we're going the right way around. Positive, others, negative. Yes. There we go. New rectifier. We've got all the caps in. Two there. These three, big fat one. I think we can now put this back together and try it out. So there we go. We have now put in the new full bridge rectifier. It's a nice big meaty one. Replace this cap, these ones, these two. There we are, everything is looking fine. Let's put it back together and see if it works. Here we are. We're back with all the remains that I've taken out the power supply. I've got the load resistor back on the five volt line. This is hooked up to the five volts. Let's turn that on and now switch it on and see what happens. Okay, nothing exploded. This is good. We've got 12.13 volts on the 12 volt line. That looks like a more sensible number. Last time we had 10. So now let's try five volts. I'm gonna to have to turn it off whilst to do this. That's good enough for me, 5.02. Again, before with a load resistor on that was getting loaded down. So in fact, let's load it with both resistors and then see what happens. Right, so here we are. We now have both load resistors. So according to what I'm reading, this should put 2.2 amps on the 5 volt rail and 1.2 amps on the 12 volt rail. Now, last time when I tried this, the 5 volt rail dropped quite a bit and the 12 volt rail was at 10 volts. So let's see what happens now. Okay, 4.97. That's fine. This is probably the limit of what this power supply can give out anyway. So now let's try it with the 12 volts. 11.16. Uh, there is quite a lot of load on this though, which is way more than there will ever be on the actual machine. So there we go. I think we've fixed it. Now I'm not going to power any 12 volt things off this power supply ever again, because I have a go well not a go tech a HXC 2001 floppy adapter that's 5 volts and the rest of the ST I think is 5 volts anyway there's no weird analog circuitry inside it I don't think so this should work quite nicely um, to answer my first question of whether this was worth doing clearly it was because now everything is given out the correct voltages and that resistor is very, very hot. Right, there we go. Happy days. So there we go. That's now a nice working power supply. Um, this was quite an easy thing, really. It was just replacing some through-hole components. I was quite amazed at how easily it became unsoldered. Unsoldered? Desoldered. Quite a nice thing, really. Got me in the mood for a bit more soldering. So, in future videos... I have these. Now, these are 30 pin SIMs, but this is just the PCB. I had these made following some designs I got off GitHub. I've never made PCBs before. Let's see if these work. I need RAM chips for them. So I've got a 72 pin SIM module. So I need to desolder this. So in another video, probably the next one actually, We'll look at the ST's RAM upgrade that's in it, figure out how it works, take these chips off, put them on here, and see if this works. To make debugging easier, I've got a diagnostic cartridge that has a memory checker on it, so I can check all the RAM is working correctly. 
Another thing I want to build is this, which is an ACSI to SD adapter. ACSI is Atari's version of SCSI. I think it came out before SCSI existed, so I don't think there was a standard at the time. But this has got a really tiny surface mount component on it. So I'm kind of building myself up to making this. If I screw this board up, I don't have any spares. So when I replace this, you'll have noticed there's a complete lack of any sort of proof that it works other than me poking at it with a multimeter, right? Normally, the next part of the video would be something sensible like I put this in the ST, we turn it on, and I show you a video of it working, and we maybe play with it for a bit. I haven't done that bit because I have no way of getting video out of this machine. Or when I did this repair, I didn't have a way. I've now since bought one of these, which is a USB capture device. So I can now use this to capture some video and I'll be able to show you everything on the ST. So there we are. If this is interesting and you want to see more, do the YouTube thing at the bottom. I'm nearly up to a thousand subscribers, so getting that number would be quite cool. Um, and until next time, I'll see you later.